welcome to Education in Our Community. Our special guest today is Dr. Cecilia Louise Hatshepsut Arrington. She is an educator, an author. She is the former chair of the Department of Ethnic Studies and African American Studies, sometimes called Black Studies, at Merritt College. And she is here to share with us a topic about her book. Her book is called The Life and Confessions of a Black Studies Teacher. Is that correct? Or do yes. You, oh, okay. That's correct. Because I think of you with the word educator, which is even broader than teacher. And yet the word teacher has great meaning because a teacher is someone that is with you to share lessons from life and to provide that. And we all are teachers. Yes. But we're, I think we're not all educators because the educational process is where you bring things out. Yes. And I've seen you do this over and over again, where you bring people to their full essence as human beings. Thank and you. not many instructors have that gift. So Dr. Arrington, I wanted you to just share with us uh, why you decided to write the book. Uh, I decided to write this book in memory of my mother, basically, and my father, and to leave my students a legacy once I've left these shores of North America. My mother sacrificed so much to educate her four children. She had a lot to encounter in a Jim Crow environment in the Black Belt of Alabama. And so, and then I wanted my students, I've taught as many as uh, 1,500 students in my 33 year teaching career at Merritt College and six years at Castlemont High School. I wanted them to always have some, some book, something I had written to refer to in all the years I've instructed. Civilization started in Africa. Our first tools, our first families, mm -hmm. our first f mothers and fathers who came together to understand a way of life, all of this started in the African continent. The decimal in math, the zero, mm -hmm. the fraction, all of this comes out of the African continent. And the beautiful part about it is black men conceived of these things without any outside penetration. They thought of these things on their own. In fact, black men were doing a lot of things before the 1400s in Africa, but the 1400s and the slave trade went on to interrupt every facet of African society. Yes. You see, Japanese, Chinese, Chicanos, and what have you, don't respect us black people. Reason being, they don't see in us in those history books. And when they go down East 14th Street in Oakland and see a black man drunk on the streets, head in his hand, they say, oh, those black people are just like that. But they don't know that those black people down there crying on East 14th Street with their head in their hands are there because this country has made them feel like nothing. But once they take black studies and they understand, then they say, hey, if this country would do more for black people or just treat them as equals, we wouldn't have those scenes on East 14th Street. But once I go down East 14th Street and I look at the scene, I say, oh my God, what those men could be and ladies could be if they knew who they were, mm -hmm. if society hadn't wrecked them. See, society has wrecked black people and we have to get into a knowledge of that. And as the Muslims always say, once you know better, then do better. Yes. A lot of folk don't understand it. But the Civil Rights Movement didn't begin with Mrs. Parks and Dr. King. 
The civil rights, they were certainly the catalyst, yes. and they certainly were spokespersons, but the civil rights movement that started in this country in the 1950s, 60s, and so forth was launched by your veterans of World War II who said, we're not going to bring about freedom abroad and don't have freedom in our own country. And a noted man was Charles Houston. Yes. Charles Houston was so outstanding. Thurgood Marshall was a student of Charles Houston. That Supreme Court decision to outlaw Jim Crow schools should have been Charles Houston's decision because he worked. He went all over the South and took pictures of black schools. He worked to get black guys into law school in this country, black men in, into law schools. He died. Charles Houston's doctor told him, Mr. Houston, if you don't rest more, you're not going to be around here. But he still worked until 2, 3, and 4 o'clock in the morning getting out briefs to get black men into law school in this country. Oh, Charles Houston. And he went on to tell this country, you've got to make schools better for African Americans. In the black family class, I stressed the rearing of black children. I have it here in, in my book. Okay. On page 34, I have 41, 41 points to give a child to rear him properly. It's known as a value system. Could you share some of that with us? Oh, yes. First of all, give God credit for your life. Don't disrespect the elderly. Get a good education. Be the best person you can be. Have children when you are married, not out of wedlock. Now, folk didn't just sit down in my hometown, Demopolis, and, uh, and, and tell us this, but the way we, but the way they carried themselves. And while we would talk on the front porch at home, picking, I mean, I'm sorry, peeling peaches and those kind of things, that came over. That came over. And um, honor your mother and your father. See, a lot of our young men today don't know where they're going because nobody teaches them. They don't have a value system. So, so in that class, and then, and then I taught in that family class, it should be mother and father together. Mother and father together rearing these children. Mm -hmm. Mothers go around and they, and, and they shake their bottoms and say, I don't need this man, but you do. You need that man in the house for your son to see him walk and talk and make decisions. And I also, and all of this is in my book. Okay, all right. I also told black men, it doesn't matter how you and that child's mother are getting along, hopefully, peacefully. But if not, go and see your child. It is important that you walk with your child. Some men want to have a lot of money to give the child. That isn't important. Your child wants to see daddy to hold his hand. If you don't have any money to give, get your child, walk down the block, and collect rocks. I have this in my book, or leaves together. And when that child is 35 years old or 40, that child will say, Daddy didn't give me money, but Daddy always came to see me. 